I'm not always super productive. Some days I get a lot done. Others I can't seem to get started. And game dev is not only hard, but it takes an inordinate amount of time. As you probably know, it's really common to have problems with time management. To support me and help me be more productive, my girlfriend recently suggested I try using a Pomodoro timer. If you're not familiar, the Pomodoro technique is to work for 25 minutes and then take a break for 5 minutes. You set a timer and you follow it strictly. Until that timer rings, you don't stop what you're doing. So 25 minutes of work, 5 minutes of break is 30 minutes. You strive to do 4 cycles of this, amounting to nearly 2 hours of work. You then take a longer break for 30 minutes or so. And if you feel like it, you can start again. But even just doing this once a day can help you get a lot done. Where otherwise you would have been procrastinating, looking at YouTube or whatever all day. I know that can happen to me sometimes. So naturally, after she suggested this, I immediately started to create mail in Godot. And that's what I want to show you today. I decided to call it Gomodoro. Now this is nothing special really. At first I intended to just slap together something super quick for my own sake. But I kept adding to it little by little. And now it's a working desktop application Pomodoro timer. It's open source, made entirely in GDScript and available on my GitHub as always. Let's take a look at it. There really aren't many buttons. You can start the timer or change to the next state using the play button. You can pause and open the settings. Starting the timer plays a short sound. This circle in the middle will gradually fill over time. The color and the text change to let you know it's focusing time. And the little timer icon down at the bottom even spins around while it's running. All of these icons are from the Kenny's Game Asset Pack, by the way. It will also be linked down below. We can pause at any time, and we can change the state at any time if you want to cheat a little. For the settings, we can change the durations to fit our own schedule. There are also some different profiles, two sound profiles, and a few different visual ones. If you grab the source from GitHub, you can easily make your own color themes and sound profiles and add them to this list. This is still an early work in progress, so I will add more as well as time goes on. The sound profiles are a little silly. We can have unique sounds for working, taking a break, and pausing. The harsh profile is just me banging a pan and yelling at you. Back to work. Further down, we can set the window to always be on top, which it is by default, and of course we can change the volume. In Godot, this is what it looks like. And again, this is all a work in progress and things are bound to change and improve. I said in the beginning that it's a fairly simple project, and it really is. Essentially, it's just a UI wrapper for the built-in timer node. The main logic script handles switching between states. I haven't yet decided if I want to make a, quote, real state machine. It's just using an NM right now. But this is the root of the project, really. The ready function sets some default values, as you might expect. The process functions calculates the current time and sends it to the UI controller to update. Taking a look at that function, it receives the value of the timer and the number to show. This UI controller is responsible for interacting with the visible UI. Switch state does what you might expect. When we click the play button or the next button, it determines the next state and switches over to it. Starts the timer, plays the audio, updates the look of the UI and tells the hourglass to start spinning. Down here is where all the button signals are processed. They mostly check our current state and call the switch state function. We have the pause button and the settings menu button here. There is actually a class called button handler, but it only handles the settings buttons right now. Again, work in progress. The global class is auto-loaded and holds some global variables that the logic needs access to. It preloads our audio files, stores some data, and creates the profiles for us to switch between. If you wanted to create your own profile, there are three steps. Add it to the list in the UI, regardless if it's sound or color. Add sound here at the top in the global class. Input the colors from your color profile here, just as I have, or your sound profiles here. In the main logic class right at the bottom, we have the audio select and the color theme select. Add the number that matches with the UI and call the profile that you just created. Simple. The audio and color profiles classes look like this. They just store data and are initiated with a constructor. I hope you see some use for this 
I have a to-do list for it, like implementing the longer 30 minute break after completing your two hours. This should also be customizable, I think. Then I want to implement saving, so your profile and duration stay the same the next time you open the application. More profiles as well, but it also just needs a refactor. I started out adding everything to a single class, because I didn't think I would be sharing it with anyone else. And now that I have, well, it needs some cleanup, and various fixes and improvements. If you have suggestions, please let me know. There are a ton of other, nicer Pomodoro timers out there for you to find. You don't have to use mine. I just thought it would be fun to create and share my own. You can download it over on itch, linked down below. And you can grab the source code to make modifications yourself, also linked down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you find any of my content helpful, and happy coding.